The last race of the day is for Senior Pro Karts. Adam Kester is the championship leader. It's another standing start, and here are the grid positions, Jake. Peter Stott is in pole position alongside Oliver Hill, and then Adam Kester and Andy Downey from Dave Grundy in the GX200, and Paul Williams is sixth. Robert Bourne, also known as Riley Bourne, of course. Matt Morgan is on row four. Then rounding out the grid, we have Michael Yeadon, Dan MC, Stephen Cooley, Andy Massey, and Nick Hughes in 13th place. A little bit of a moment there off the start, though. Dan MC struggling to get his engine going. We know what the MC stands for now. Clearly, it stands for motocross. That's the kind of helmet he's wearing. Peter Stott on the left, Oliver Hill on the right. They have a win apiece. Who's going to get the whole shot to the first corner? Let's find out. Well, it's not going to be Peter Stott. He doesn't get a great start at all as Adam Kester overtakes him, as does Andy Downey. So it's Oliver Hill who leads through the first corner to turn two. Oh, and there is Stott coming back into contention. And we've run wide. Kester goes wide on the curbs. Through goes the five of Grundy. There's Matt Morgan going wheel to wheel with Paul Williams. Oh, he's lost it! Goodness me, Matt Morgan, he just slams on the brakes. The back end overtakes the front. We've been overtaken by Michael Yeadon, and it's absolute chaos at the moment as everybody tries to sort themselves out. And that's another big run wide there through the double left-hander. That's Yeadon losing out to the 74 of Adam Kester. You can call it a double left-hander if you want to, Jake, like they do here at uh, Hooton Park. I'm going to call it the double apex, oh, because that's what it is. Well, 97. That's Stephen Cooley. Looks, like, looks so, like he's out. Yep, Cooley, I'm afraid, looks like he's going no further. Well, after a difficult start, Peter Stott has caught right up to the back of Oliver Hill. Oliver Hill, of course, in the number 12, running a very... Oh, up the inside, there's the move! Peter Stott just pulled that out of nowhere on the second lap. Yeah, he didn't want him to go by. He wanted to keep him behind him for as long as possible because there's a danger here that Peter Stott will clear off. Well, and he's already, look at that, he's that, already pulled four or five car that's, legs. That's crazy, the right chassis just disappearing up the road already. And there's not a lot that Oliver Hill can do about it. That is ridiculous, isn't it? He's got fast and he's now, what, 10 cart lengths probably, eight to 10 cart lengths ahead. Well, there's no doubt who's gonna get the win if it stays like this. Kester's trying to work his way further forward. We ride on board with Kester, that is Williams up the road, and in front of him, that is Rob, uh, no, it's not, it's Riley Bourne. So Riley Bourne, that's always going to confuse me in this one, it is of course Riley Bourne. He's going to go through first, a little bit of a tank slapper on the throttle from Williams. Kester's going to get alongside him. Are they going to be able to run side by side to the double apex on the inside line? Williams holds it for the moment, Kester has to come back at him. GX200 and Extreme Engines in this one. Now, to be fair, in the live commentary, I thought the GX200s were slower than the Extreme, but people have put me right since. Oh, that started second. Oliver Hill's got him. Now, Peter stopped there. Well, he must have made a mistake, Jake. He yeah. had a seven tenths lead yeah, at the must, end of the previous lap. Must have been at Stanlow. He must have made a mistake in the final half because here he comes again at Oliver Hill. And it's Charles play to get back through on the inside of him again. So Stott took the lead, then lost it. Now he's retaken it. So he must have made a mistake at Stanlow to uh, lose the back end of the car. We're back on board with Kester. Dives in on the inside of Paul Williams. And then it's Riley Bourne in front of them, just as it was before. Now we're coming up to the same point on the course again that Peter Stott made the mistake last time. And I don't think he's made the same mistake twice. This time he has held the lead in front of Oliver Hill. And we're on board with Kester. Go again, diving through, and this time we're going to get the overtaking move nailed to the mast. The timing, by the way, is slightly behind, but it is correct in terms of the times. And you can see Peter stopped there with the fastest lap, and it's a significant fastest lap, isn't it? Over a half, half a second quicker now than Oliver Hill. Well, Peter Stott may have the faster cart aboard his uh, right chassis as we go back on board with Adam Kester through the double apex but uh, the traditionalists and the motor racing fanatics might argue that Oliver Hill has the cooler looking card. He's in the number 12, and if you look at his graphics kit in the background, that is an Ayrton Senna tribute worthy of the man himself. That looks so cool. Now, look at the lead that Stop has developed. That is quite incredible. So he, he's made a mistake, he's lost the lead, got it back, and as soon as he gets the lead back, he just clears off. Yeah, he's clearly got the pace today. Dave Grundy, though, third position. As he runs there in front of Riley Bourne. And the two of them are having a nice little squabble building up by the look of it because Riley Bourne is not going to drop back off pace, is he? Grundy is definitely going to have to have his work cut out to keep him at bay. Riley Bourne looks motivated. You can possibly just about make out from our camera in turn two, which we had problems with earlier on, but uh, it's been okay for these finals. 
that uh, you might just about make out the um, cable that we'll be running a cable cam on next year uh, for the IndyCar Plus series. We'll also be running a drone for these uh, televised finals as well. Can't quite see it there because it's really thin. But unfortunately, this weekend, it's failed us. We're not sure what's happened, but uh, anyway, it's going back to the manufacturers to be repaired. And we'll be using the cable cam for all of the IndyCar Plus meetings. That's assuming it doesn't fail us again, of course. Cable cam, drone, and of course, we will hopefully have our 360 degree camera crew with us next season for every round, hopefully. And that means we'll have 360 degree cameras in every race. Kester closing up on Grundy and Bourne. Riley Bourne has definitely made mincemeat of Dave Grundy's advantage. Now he's got to try and find the gap to come through. Grundy getting a little bit sideways, but Riley Bourne just can't quite get the move up the inside line yet. And every time they falter, Adam Kester just chews at the gap and now finds himself right in behind them. So this is going to be interesting as they cut through. Out through the double left. This is not going to be easy to nail here for Kester. He's got to get past not one fearless racer, but two. Now, the GX200 of Dave Grundy, the extreme engines in behind them here are probably just as quick as Dave because the drivers are probably lighter. Now, I'm not in any way suggesting Dave Grundy is uh, overweight. Uh, if anything, Dave's I mean, he's a proper bloke, Dave, and he carries a bit of extra weight, mainly because, obviously, he's just built of muscle. Muscle, as we know, is a lot heavier than fat. This is going to be an interesting one for the 52 through the double apex, and Kester is the fastest man on track, even faster than Peter Stott, a 40.62 from Kester. So he's bubbled up in frustration here. He finds himself fifth on the road. He's the fastest driver out there, but he can't get by these mobile roadblocks. Fantastic onboard camera action, and I want to thank all the drivers that have sent in their footage for us. Um, if you can buy 360 cameras for next year, that'll be great. We'll have a 360 camera crew here, hopefully, next year. Oh, here's the move. Riley Bourne's been building up to it. He gets the move on Grundy. We nearly follow through as well. Adam Kester almost gets into fourth position. Has to bail out of it. And here's the retaliation from Grundy. No, you don't. Oh, I love this class. Do you know what? All the way back in 2001, the first serious cart I ever drove was a pro cart. These things are absolutely awesome. And these guys really are getting the benefit out of it here at Hooton Park today. Dave Grundy has done well to hold on to the position for so long, but we're into the last lap now. And this is that battle for third place, and it's Riley Bourne that now has it. Turn two, the gate. Down the straight, up towards the hairpin again. And Riley Bourne holding on in front of Grundy and Kester. Kester's trying to slingshot here, and up in the air, a frustrated hand comes up off the wheel from Dave Grundy. Riley Bourne just boxing him in, and here comes Kester trying to find them space to get through. No change, no opportunity knocks at all. And Peter Stott up front has pulled well clear, 3.6 seconds away. Dominant in the end for Peter Stott. Oliver Hill has to be content for second place, but who's going to get third? It's Riley, it's Mr. Lightning Seeds. The life of Riley is lived. Third position for Riley Bourne in front of Grundy and Kester who ends a frustrating race as the fastest man, even quicker than our dominant winner, Peter Stott. So Peter Stott takes the win from Oliver Hill, then it's Riley Bourne in front of Dave Grundy and Adam Kester, Paul Williams, Michael Yeadon and Andy Downey. Dan MC is there in P9. Andrew Massey rounds out the top 10. What does that do to the championship standings with one race to go in 2022? Well, it's Adam Kester still in front. Andy Downey in second from Oliver Hill, just three points between those two. Another five back is Josh Eden, then Mike D'Annunzio from Paul Williams, Stephen Cooley, Dave Keach, Keith Hemingway, and in 10th place, it's Steve Meller. Lots of camaraderie around here at Hooter Park, not least in the Park Fermi area after the race. Bit of man love going on, but the man in the yellow helmet, look, that's Dave Grundy. Proper man, proper hairdo. That's my hairdo right there. He's not getting involved in that nonsense. No, that's not for Dave. Not for Dave. And we've got wheelchair racing going on in Park Fermi as well. Just time for a quick photo of the man love. And before we go, just to tell you, if you want to race here at Hooton Park in 2023, we're covering six rounds of the IndyCar Plus series. Get in touch with the circuit. Telephone number on your screen now. And maybe we'll be commentating on you. We'll see you then.